Hi folks, if you are curious to know where do the objects live in memory and for how long. Fasten your seat belts, we are going to learn memory management in Python. Let us begin with this simple code with its memory representation. When x equals to 10 is executed, an integer object 10 is created in memory and its reference is assigned to variable x. This is because everything is object in Python. Let us verify if this is true. Next statement, y equals to x would create another reference variable, y, which will contain reference to the same object. Let us verify if this is true by comparing their memory location using id function. The message in output window confirms that they are referring to the same object. Now let us add 1 to x. This will result in creation of a new integer object, 11, and x starts referring to the new object. Again. Let us confirm by comparing the memory locations and output window confirms that they are now referring to two different objects. Now let us create third variable z with integer value 10. Let us compare its id with y. And here is the surprise. Both the variables point to the same object and the reason is Python optimizes memory utilization by allocating the same object reference to a new variable if object already exists with the same value. Any reference variable may later be assigned to object of different type. For example, an object of car can be assigned to z. That's what it means to say that Python is dynamically typed language. Let us create a variable y. In order to begin with the execution of this statement, some background memory organization happens. Every process is allocated with some memory by underlying operating system. Python interpreter will receive its share for execution. How much memory is allocated will depend on the Python version, platform and environment setting. Usually we need not worry about it much. This memory is further divided into two areas. One is called heap memory. Another one is called stack memory. The methods are executed from stack memory. By default, the program begins its execution under main method stack. The objects are created in heap memory, whereas references are created in stack memory. Now in the next statement, the function f1 is called. So a new stack frame is added on the top. The lower frame holds the state of method including which line of code is executing and the value of all the local variables. Now the execution jumps to f1. The function parameter x gets reference to integer object 5 as input value. In the next statement, x gains a new object reference due to multiplication. In the following statement, f2 is invoked. So a new stack frame is created. Note that there is a variable x in both the functions. However, they don't overwrite the values of each other since they are placed in different stack frames. On completion of function, return value is handed over to y. The stack frame is no more required, so it is removed from memory. Same thing happens when f1 returns. Note that there is no variable right now referring to 10. So what happens to it? We'll see it very soon. Meanwhile, let us understand this process of object creation with one more example. Here we have a class which contains a number of wheels as property. GetWheel is a getter method that returns number of wheels. Now, as soon as a new object of car is created, its init method is invoked. So a new stack frame is created. The instance variable wheels is created on the heap memory inside the car object and init helps in initializing the value of the same. Now, if we try to invoke instance method get wheel, then a new stack frame will be created which gets reference to car object as input parameter from interpreter that is self with the help of which it returns reference to the instance member value. Now if we want to print the value of n then the call to print n function will result in another stack creation. Now let us see when do the objects die. Consider this class car. Let us create its instance. Interpreter maintains a table where it keeps the track of objects and the number of references to those objects. Of course, there will be some binary representation for car object 1, but for the sake of simplicity, we will consider the name as it is. 
So our newly created object has one reference. Let's see to refer to the same object. This will increase the reference counter to 2. Let us now remove the reference from C1. So the counter becomes 1. Let us assign a new object to C2. A new row will be added to the table for car object 2. The car object 1 reference will become 0. Such objects who do not have any variable referring to them are called dead objects. Python has mechanism called garbage collector. It runs as soon as the reference counter becomes 0. It removes the dead object from memory. This algorithm used for garbage collection is called reference counting. Different languages use different algorithm for garbage collection. For example, Java uses mark and sweep algorithm where the objects are marked as soon as they are dead. But they are swept out of memory periodically and not immediately. Both the algorithms have their own advantages. For example, when the dead objects are removed immediately, there is always optimal memory utilization. This is advantageous when the memory is limited. However, this slows down the speed of execution due to frequent invocation of garbage collector. Note that the choice of algorithm is implementation specific. Even for the same language implementation, for example, C Python, PyPy, Iron Python, Stackless, Jython are different implementation of Python language. In order to understand when exactly garbage collector is invoked, I am going to run this code step by step in PyDev debugger. Let us print memory location of car object. Here I am creating a weak reference R to the car object. This is called weak reference because garbage collector does not keep count of such references. Let us print R. Output window confirms that R and C1 are referring to the same memory location. Now assign none to C1 which means reference counter in the table decrements to 0. Let us print R again. The print message in the output window confirms that the memory is reclaimed by garbage collector even before the execution of next statement. Let us compare and understand the difference between Python and other languages like Java or C when they execute this statement x equals to 10. Don't worry even if you do not know other languages. No specific data declaration is needed in Python. Hence it is called dynamically typed, whereas data type declaration is mandatory in other languages. Hence they are called statically typed. The 10 in Python will be instantiated as object in heap memory. In other languages, 10 is just a primitive data type stored in 4 bytes of memory in case of Java and 2 bytes of memory in C language. The size of memory reserved by system depends on the type of data mentioned at the time of declaration. Here x in python contains reference to integer object 10 whereas in other languages it contains memory location to primitive data type int with value 10. Let us see what happens on execution of this statement x equals to x plus 1. In python x starts referring to a new object whose value is 11 whereas in C or Java x continues to point to the same memory with value now changed to 11. What happens when more variable say y is declared with same integer value. In python, both the reference variables x and y start referring to the same object, whereas in java or c, x and y are two different variables pointing to two different memory locations. Let us summarize. We have seen that the methods and variables are created on stack memory. The object and instance variables are created on heap memory. A new stack frame is created on invocation of a function or method. Stack frames are destroyed as soon as the function or method returns. Garbage collector is a mechanism to clean up the dead objects. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments.